Hey, good morning. Uh, it's a wonderful summit which happens every year. Happy to be here representing Bosch. Whenever we speak about sustainability, Bosch comes into picture for a couple of reasons. You know, uh, being a mobility company, 138 years old, uh, sometimes we are seen as the cause, sometimes we are seen as the solvers of problems that we have today. So my conversation, I cannot miss mobility and sustainability when I, when I am in a sustainability conversation. So uh, next few minutes, I'll, I give my perspectives about uh, what's happening in the field of mobility when I wear the lens of uh, sustainability. Uh, it's very difficult to give one answer these days when people ask me which fuel will be dominating the world. What kind of cars people will use? Will people use cars or not? What will be the role of software in car? When these questions are asked, it's very difficult to give one answer. Because every now and then, topics which have nothing to do with technology changes the scenario. You know, somebody knows how to deal with a pager and suddenly the connected cars has a setback. So the world events has different kind of impacts on mobility. So I, I say technology plurality is the way it's going. Each region is adopting its own models and templates of mobility. Uh, so the best way to understand this, I've been working in Bosch for more than two and a half decades. And I've seen Bosch kind of transform itself in a very different way. You know, a pure uh, you know, carburetor to electronics, now to compute world. But this ad of Bosch actually kind of says a lot of things. It's, for me, it's not a marketing ad. Because I speak about Bosch in very different kind of events to sell Bosch products. But for sure, I don't have to do this here. But this, I thought this video can be a, a kind of a representative thought process which is going, going in the field of mobility. I'm on the road like a boss. My name is Green, charging clean, his new ride, has tech inside, across the street, a different need, top condition, low emission, and that's a team, hybrid dream, cause it drives so many miles, many miles, many miles, many miles, what the truck, here comes Chuck, his fuel cell, no smell, like great range like to make a change, and I decide how I ride, we decide how we ride. Whatever you drive, drive like a Bosch, with innovative powertrains from combustion engines to electric drives and fuel cells, for lower emissions and better air quality, from Bosch. It's, it's very interesting, right? We, we never said what which is that fuel which is going to power the car in, in the future. If you observe this, we used diesel, we used electric vehicle, we said hybrid, hydrogen fuel cell, we said everything. So I think as you look ahead, the technology plurality is going to drive mobility, also specific to the region. The horses was the only thing which we are not saying will be relevant in the future. Horses are really gone. I, I am still asking the marketing team in Germany why they use the horse there because I thought it was gone long back. Uh, but the rest is still, you know, each country is adopting each one of these in different flavors, different formats. That's exactly what I wanted to kind of say. When we look at India, what kind of innovation India can think about in the context of sustainability, in the changing world of mobility, perhaps it's good to see a few templates, what's happening around the world. And I, I have the luxury of watching this closely because we are the largest software development company for automotive industry. I watch what China is doing, what Germany is doing, what US is doing. And so it has its own flavors, right? There's no one template. So that's what you see if you, if you look at, there is a US template. I think they did, they, they really jolted the world to make Everybody believe that electric vehicle is real. 
So Tesla defied odds to say that there is reality in electric vehicles. So it's a kind of pioneer thought. So there's a US template. There's a China template where the government said, hey, you don't care, you must go electric. We're going to do everything what you want. If you want millions of charging stations, we'll do it for you. You want energy subsidy, we're going to do it for you. You want manufacturing subsidy, we're going to do it for you. You want technology to come to China, we're going to help you out. So it's a template where the government is playing a very dominant role. And there's a lot of innovation happening in the China world. And if by far, they seem to be leading the way in electric vehicles. Then there's a Germany template, which is uh, a kind of uh, climate activism driven by climate activism, uh, also kind of mixed with the political views of what should be the world in 2030 or 2035. And then suddenly you figure out, hey, perhaps we jump the gun too quick, and then can we recalibrate our thought process, the Germany template. The India template is difficult to figure out, yet draw, let's say, an inference on India template. Perhaps we are sometimes starting late is an advantage, right? So we are trying to define a template borrowing the good and bad of the world. So we'll figure out what could be the India template. So which many of us in this room can actually have an influence to define an India template. So let's go into the China template. So as I said, you know, you just look at the charging station. I said the China template is dominated by massive investment in infrastructure. Uh, if you see the electric was the way they, you know, quickly pushed, and this was pushed by the government. You see the number of charging stations per vehicle. Look at it, you know, every 10 EV, you have a charging station in uh, uh, China. Compare it with India, it's maybe 100. 100 is a very diplomatic number. Perhaps it is even more. Uh, so there's a big gap to bridge from an infrastructure point. So the charge anxiety is much lower for a Chinese rider in an electric vehicle than in any other part of the world. So they have solved this in many ways, actually. You know, and also there is a, I don't know, I mean, sometimes when you speak to Chinese, they say, we have a cottage industry of electric vehicles. You know, because there's new name which sprung around in the last five years, six years, in different parts of China, assembling electric vehicles of all forms and shapes. And uh, there's a big industry. And I, what you will see as you go forward will be a consolidation of these into few. And who will perhaps become the global OEMs? They may be, you know, perhaps selling their cars in the rest of the world as well, if, let's say, the geopolitics doesn't play very hard. So that they are in a consolidation phase. The adoption phase, I think, they have moved a little bit ahead. So uh, if you see how they have solved it, I mean, I was in Shenzhen a few months back, or beginning of this year. It's a beautiful city. Uh, the BYD, you know, is, is a hometown for BYD. And you come out of Shenzhen airport, it's just BYD all around. There's no other vehicle. And how is it possible? Because the government, the local mayor, the government says, in this town, all the taxes will be BYD. Imagine this being a policy like this in any other part of the world. I think there will be, you know, many court cases, some of the... OEs perhaps will lose their license. Uh, we are still figuring out how to have rapid taxis in Bangalore, right? Uh, so the government says BYD is a taxi to go, and you see BYD scaling up in city like Shenzhen. And I had a chance to sit in a beautiful car called Neo. Some of you might have experienced Neo. Wonderful car. It looks exactly like Porsche for good reasons. And uh, their marketing is that it looks like Porsche, but it's better than Porsche, but it costs lower than Porsche. I'm sure there are many Germans here which who would never like this statement. And I, I don't, and I'm not endorsing this statement by Neo uh, team. But I just did sit, sit in that car. It looks plush, really good. Uh, there's beautiful gadgets, you know, there's a, something which stares at you. You can talk to it and then you, know, you can ask Hey Neo, massage my chair, it does massage for you. Wonderful. And 
if you feel anxious about charging, somebody comes and takes the vehicle, charges and brings it back to you. So there is no risk of you getting stranded on the road. You're going for a long drive, they will tell you where is the, you know, the dark zone of charging and they send a mobile charging unit for you so that you don't have the chances that you get stranded there. Suppose I'm doing a trip equivalent to Bangalore to Ladakh. You know, where are the places where you cannot charge? So there's a mobile charging unit waiting for you, which will charge you. So some of this is fundamentally a consumer backward solving of the electric vehicle story to ensure that the charge anxiety is out of your mind. So which is, I mean, you, I'm sure you cannot think of this kind of a service in Germany, as we are some distance away even in India, right? Uh, also not in US. So that's a Chinese template of looking at electric vehicles. Uh, no wonder if you see the number of electric vehicles sold around the world, Chinese are ahead uh, of the rest of the world. So now you come to a uh, bit of a US template. So when Tesla started, it was seen as a maverick trying to do something. I mean, many of the German OEs said, hey, this is not going to work. For sure, it's not going to work. I mean, this is a good experiment. I don't think you can run on the road and you won't have thousands of people using it. But today, there are many who use the car. They are fans of Tesla. But the thing is, the sales of Tesla are flattening or the rate of growth is reducing, not just in US, also in China. So, is the let's say the initial adoption of the hype around electric vehicles is it slowing down is the question right so what's next is the tesla the only answer for electric vehicles already you see ford and gm announcing hybrid vehicles in us so there is a shift from pure electric to hybrid vehicles in us beyond tesla so there is a us template which was dominated by tesla and there's alternate options coming out in US. Now come to Germany. So you see, you know, when I see the headlines in 2010 or even you now, let's say 2015, they said no IC engine anywhere by 2030. Not a single IC engine on the road. Now this was a European Union statement. Uh, so 2025, I think we are now saying perhaps 2035, pushed by few five years. Uh, I'm not sure whether 2035 is really the end. And uh, we had stopped all the Euro projects, Euro 5, Euro 6. There was a Euro 7, which was supposed to come in uh, Europe. And we had stopped the projects because anyway, IC engine will go away, we'll shift to electric, and you don't need Euro 7. By the way, we started Euro 7 projects again. So, so the cleaner versions of IC engine vehicles are here to stay for a longer period. And there is also adoption of hybrid vehicles, more hybrid vehicles than pure electric vehicles. You know, I've seen in Bosch parking lot where they give, you know, subsidy for charging, but still the number of battery electric vehicles are less compared to hybrid vehicles. People still prefer hybrid vehicles rather than a pure battery vehicle. So the German template is driven largely by uh, what's happening in European Union as a policy making. So there is cleaner uh, form of IC engines, maybe synthetic fuel, biofuel is here to stay. So that's a German template. So how will India move? Now comes to the story in our backyard. So, on a lower base, you have seen phenomenal rise of electric vehicles in India. So, before that, how actually India moves? I mean, some of you would have seen these, uh, these yeah. statements earlier because, I mean, Niti Aayog very often produces these uh, statistics. Uh, India goods movement, there is a phenomenal increase in railways. So, normally, the trucks are an answer for goods movement in most part of the world. You know, they look at how to increase the speed of movement of trucks. 
for moving to increase the supply chain efficiency in india the percentage of rail for goods movement has increased so you will see that this is going up in the coming years and also the passenger cars the people movement is also moving uh, i mean the shared concept is not going away we thought after the covid shared as a concept will go away but i think india is still uses shared shared not as uh, perhaps taking a car on uh, uh, as a shared asset but more as using the the shared autos or shared two wheelers or uh, uh, public transport this is going to increase the passenger vehicles will continue to increase but there will be perhaps a movement of passenger vehicles being bought in the tier 2 tier 3 uh, and other towns of india so because the connectivity is still uh, has to be improved and you know even if by 2030 if you see the numbers we will be around 5 to 6% of the number of vehicles sold would be electric vehicles and india is also following a bit of uh, hybrid story there is there is a surge of hybrid vehicles but there is more interest in hybrid vehicles because of uh, the convenience and the charge anxiety because in india the government is not perhaps so too keen to solve the charging infrastructure as a topic perhaps they would rather be happy to provide subsidies but they would expect you know the private sector to solve it so it would take it would be an organic journey for india to you know really build the infrastructure for electric vehicles so if i say india's field of action perhaps we should not there are many countries which looked at how do we solve the sustainability of mobility by improving the vehicle the focus was heavy on the vehicle but i think we, in india we need to do both you know solve it in the vehicle solve it in the ecosystem it's very funny you know can we even say how to reduce the number of the mobility needs so when we were all uh, sitting at home in uh, during the covid time people said why should human beings move they they have do I mean the purpose of the movement was because of the work now they are all working from home so the mobility need of human race is phenomenally reduced now we don't even remember when covid was you know it is already 2 3 years and bangalore roads are back to its reputation so the human need for move is not going to go away so if we have to solve this we have to solve it inside the vehicle and the ecosystem of course electrification journey will continue in india we need to find out how to really improve the performance of battery so there are a lot of uh, of different forms of vehicle two wheeler three wheeler four wheeler light commercial and trucks all formats of the vehicle india will continue to have multimodal format of uh, transport hydrogen we already have experimented uh, on hydrogen fueled vehicles so the cost of generation cost of transport and also the the green hydrogen necessity to produce green hydrogen and at scale it is very capex intensive so these are the topics which will which we need to fix in india uh perhaps synthetic fuels not so much spoken in india india is looking at you know still the biofuels increasing the percentage of ethanol in in conventional uh, uh fuel and increase the efficiency um, and also i think in india the advantage we have is there's a massive software fraternity here in india big part of performance of the vehicle is now solved by software now perhaps you don't have to you know do as compared to the you know how we need to optimize earlier the performance in the hardware the battery performance emission performance etc is solved phenomenally using software and we are a software powerhouse in india lot of innovation can happen around the software so i think if we look look at solving india mobility problem both in the vehicle and in the ecosystem perhaps we have a better uh, answer for <coughs> solving the sustainability needs of uh, mobility in india but perhaps that's an advantage we have and not to follow copy paste the template of china or a template of us or a template of germany and evolve a template which fits very very heterogeneous very diverse needs of india very different kinds of you can you have a 20 countries 20 formats of mobility in a single country 
perhaps you need to solve it for a, such a diversity uh, of mobility needs in India. So, summarizing, sustainability is a topic which is very high on all the mobility players. I would say solve it both in vehicle and vehicle ecosystem. A lot of R&D investment is required in India for India because many of us invested a lot on R&D for solving problems in the world. We need to now invest in R&D to solve problems of India which are very different, very frugal innovation, very multi-format innovation. So this needs a very different format of R&D which is required for India. Use the power of software. You have a, this is our sweet spot in India. We, de we develop something like 250 billion worth of software to the world. Use this advantage to innovate, to solve problems of uh, India's sustainability. And of course, we solve it for the ecosystem and not just keep optimizing the vehicle. So nine seconds left as it says. So German, Pumklish, you know, thank you so much. <laughs>